The Soda Bottle School by Senior Laura Kuttner and Suzanne Slade. A true story of recycling, teamwork, and one crazy idea. In a Guatemalan village, students squished into their tiny schoolhouse, two grades to a classroom. The villagers had tried expanding the school, but the money ran out before the project was finished. No money meant no wall materials, and that meant no more room for the students. Until one person got a wonderful, crazy idea. This story shows that sometimes thinking outside the box or inside the bottle leads to the perfect solution. Each morning, the Guatemalan sun climbed the mighty Tecan volcano to wake the small, sleepy town of Grandos below. Fernando thought nothing exciting ever happened in his village, but then something amazing happened. And it all started with one crazy idea. That day began like every other. Mama got ready for work while Abuleta fixed black beans and eggs and Abilo told his stories. Then Fernando walked the steep hill to school. Up, up, up he climbed until he spied the school's metal roof. Fernando joined some friends playing football before school. As he ran across the playground, he waved to his favorite teacher, Senor Laura. Before she'd moved to the village, Fernando was the only person in the whole school who wore glasses. But not anymore. Senor Laura wore them too. Their glasses helped them to see lots of things. Delicate spider webs, brilliant hummingbirds, colorful rainbows in the distance. And sometimes they even saw possibilities. New ideas others didn't. That morning, the bell rang. 200 students squished inside the small schoolhouse. Two grades squished into one classroom. Two children squeezed behind one desk. The walls between the classrooms didn't reach the ceiling, so hundreds of voices echoed throughout the school. All day. Every day. Some days it was too noisy to think. After morning lessons... Mathmatias and Sincha, it was time for Rosero. Fernando ran into the wide, grassy schoolyard. He found Senor Laura sitting on a large frame made of red metal. The frame was the empty shell of classrooms that had not been finished. Years before, the village had started building new rooms, but there wasn't enough money to finish them. But there was one thing Grandos had plenty of. Trash. The problem began when products in fancy packages started arriving from other countries. Now old water bottles, soda bottles, chip bags, and grocery snacks littered the land. The town didn't have recycling centers, no garbage trucks, not even a dump. There was no place to put their trash. Senior Laura took a sip of cold soda, then set her bottle beside a metal bar. The plastic bottle sparked in the sunlight. It was exactly the same width as the metal bar. And that's when it happened. The crazy idea. Senior Laura ran to the principal's office and told her all about it. I love this idea, Principal Reina said. Let's get started right away. Then Senior Laura and the principal visited Fernando's classroom. Our trash piles are too big. Our school is too small, Senior Laura said. Do you think we could build a new school with old bottles and trash? That would take a lot of bottles, one student said. It sounds like a lot of work, worried another. I'm not sure we could do it, sighed a third. Fernando pushed his glasses up on his nose and peered outside. He studied the trash surrounding the school. He imagined a roll of colorful bottles on the metal frame. He pictured hundreds and hundreds of bottles stacked on each other. Then he saw it, a new, bigger school. A school with enough room for everyone. Fernando couldn't wait to start. His excitement spread to his friends, family, and neighbors. Before long, the whole town was talking about the school's crazy idea. Everyone wanted to help. Students, teachers, papas, mamas, abuletos, abuletas, even the mayor. Children started collecting bottles. Near school, in town, beside fields, Fernando lugged bags of sticky bottles to school. 
He washed each one and set the bottles in the sun to dry. Day after day, the bottle pile grew. Students filled Principal Renena's office with bottles, leaving only a narrow path to her desk. The empty bottles weren't strong enough to build a wall, so students stuffed the bottles with trash to create Echo Landoros. Using small sticks, they shoved old chip bags, grocery snacks, and plastic trash into the bottles. The more Echo Landoros the children made, the cleaner and more beautiful their village became. Before long, they cleaned up the entire town. Then bad news blew through the village like an August wind. The bottles had been counted. They needed thousands more. The school could not be finished again. But Fernando still believed in the crazy idea. His friends did too. So they strapped on their sandals and walked miles to nearby towns. They gathered more bottles and trash and they kept stuffing. Fernando stuffed bottles before school, during recess, after school. He stuffed until his hands blistered. After six long months, the town finally had enough Echo Lodoros, 6,000 in all. It was time to start building. The mayor bought bales of chicken wire. Students rolled wire over the metal bars and tied it securely in place. They left two huge holes for windows. The Guatemalan sun would give them plenty of free light. Fernando stacked bottles between the wire, straight and tall. When the wall grew over his head, he climbed a homemade ladder and kept stacking. Soon the wall was as high as mighty Sibia tree. Children stuffed trash between the bottles to make the wall solid and secure. Villagers gathered to admire their rainbow-colored walls. But the school wasn't finished yet. The children dragged heavy piles of powdery cement inside. They stiffed rocky sand through screens. They mixed water into the fine sand and cement powder until it turned into a sticky paste. Fernando threw a glob of cement on a wall. Splat! Students covered the plastic walls. Splat! 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 Local masons poured thick cement floors. Village welders installed windows and doors. Then the children grabbed brushes and painted the walls with bright rainbow colors. Some rooms were blue like the wide endless sky. They painted the outside with Principal Reyna's favorite color, orange. After 15 months, the school was finally finished. Ugly trash had turned into a beautiful school and Grandos was cleaned up. Joy filled the village, and joy so big it had to be celebrated. The town decided to throw a huge fiesta. Fernando and his friends decorated the school with streamers and signs. The principal gave a speech. The mayor cut a thick red ribbon. Then hundreds of feet danced to the powerful beat of Mayan songs. Papas cheered, mamas cried, but Fernando just smiled. His school was exactly as he and Senor Laura had pictured it, big and beautiful, with plenty of room for everyone. But that isn't the end of this story. Nearby villagers heard about the school made of trash. They began picking up their old bottles and bags, too. They used them to build new schools, recycling centers, fences, and more. And it all began with one crazy idea. This picture here is a picture of the teacher, Senor Laura, and the students in her classroom.